So the first thing that I do is go into the center of the room that I'm going to be uh, coordinating the wireless first. So go into the center of the room and I turn on my spectrum analyzer and just see if I can see any peaks. And so I see a couple. So it looks like we have some in-ear transmitters that are turned on. So I'm gonna go find those and uh, mute the RF on them so I can get a clean scan. So let's go find those real quick. And so sure enough, right back here, we have our wireless rack and we have four uh, Sennheiser uh, in-ear transmitters here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just mute those um, and uh, that way we can get a clean scan on all that stuff. And we also wanna make sure that our wireless transmitters uh, for uh, like wireless microphones, any uh, body packs like that, all that's off. So we can make sure that we get a very clean background scan Let's go back to the spectrum analyzer. So we are back at my spectrum analyzer back here and uh, the RF Explorer comes with a pretty long antenna uh, that's telescoping. And so I go ahead and pull this out just a bit, um, basically to make this more sensitive in the frequency that our wireless mics are. If you need to uh, verify that, you can just put up one of the little quarter wave verticals that comes with your wireless microphones. This is gonna get it more sensitive in that area. If we elongate this, it's going to make it more sensitive in lower frequency. And if we make this shorter, it's gonna make it more sensitive in higher frequency. So this is just getting a rough estimate of where, uh, where we're sitting at in the middle of this room. Yeah, we can see in here that there is nothing else sitting there. Next thing I'm going to do is open up Touchstone Pro and I'm going to start a scan from 470 up to 600 uh, with the resolution at 100 kilohertz and I'm just going to go ahead and press start and this is going to start going through and telling me where the TV stations are, if there's any other uh, transmitters that are happening. So these we can see right in here, these are the TV transmitters because they are exactly 6 megahertz wide. Uh, there's a little bit of background noise in some of these things. You can see the pilot signal um, on a TV station right there. And so I'm going to just let this go for a little bit and then I'm going to export the max trace of this. So we can go ahead and press stop. And we're going to go to tools, export max trace. And we are going to go to my desktop, make a new folder. And we are just going to call this Omni. And save this for Shure Wireless Workbench. Save. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to do the same thing, but outside. So I'm going to take this outside to basically get a uh, clean reading uh, outside the building. Uh, and then as well, then we're going to go ahead and plug this into the intended distribution and get a reading of what the wireless transmitter, wireless receivers are receiving. So let's go ahead and go outside outside now and we are facing towards the um, antenna transmitters for the TV stations which are south of us and that's going to be a direct line of sight so I'm going to just get a reading outside here so uh, I know it's kind of hard to see but we're just going to go ahead and press start and get some readings and as you can see already we have a higher signal on a couple of these TV stations because we're outside of the building in direct line of sight so we'll let this go for a little bit we'll export this trace so we're here at our wireless rack and we have the RF Explorer plugged directly into the antenna distribution at the top and we're just going to go ahead and do some scans here. So one thing that's interesting here that I'm seeing is that one, we can see that our TV channels are significantly lower uh, than our omnidirectional measurement inside the building and especially the outside measurement outside the building. Uh, and that's because these are directional antennas that are pointing towards the stage, which is pointing away from the main TV transmitters. Now, but you can see that it's not a clean signal going across the bottom here. There's all these little spikes. And so what this means to me is that there's noise uh, being injected into the antenna somewhere. So either we should A, move the antennas um, after figuring out if there is anything in the rack that's causing this because uh, our, our, T, our antenna, our microphone receivers are sitting around uh, a few transmitters. So we have a uh, ear FM transmitter here and then we also have a comm uh, transmitter here. I switched off both of those um, and I also turned off our uh, combiner for the antenna combiner, uh, all of which did not change the noise. So there is some sort of noise, maybe from DMX nodes, uh, DMX lighting, something like that that's causing this interference here. Um, but 
you know, when we have a wireless microphone turned on on these um, in front of the antennas, it's gonna be significantly louder than this background noise. So it's not gonna be too detrimental to my measurements and what I choose for my wireless frequencies. Uh, however, we can see that there's one little spike here. And so that's gonna be a transmitter of some sort. So we'll wanna stick away from that uh, thing. And we can see that on the spectrograph by a solid white line here. So I'm gonna keep that in mind, 518. I'm gonna write that down, just keep that remembered. But I'm gonna go ahead and turn on a wireless microphone on stage and I'll show you the spike that happens here. I did have to shift my measurement slightly uh, because this transmitter is up in the 600s, which we are replacing. Uh, but this one specifically is at 604 megahertz, and we can see the little spike right here. Um, and so I'm doing a scan from 500 to 620 megahertz. Uh, but we can see down here when I switched it on uh, that there was, uh, you know, the noise is here, but the actual spike of the transmitter is all the way up here, which is significantly louder. Um, you know, this is measuring. Um, up in the negative uh, 56 dBm, and this is down in the uh, 100. So you know that's a that's a 40, 44 dB, um, you know, difference there that's happening. Um, so anyway, we can see that this is significantly above this background noise. Now, if this background noise was up near this, you know, then we'd have significantly less background, uh, you know, signal to noise ratio, and we would have to fix that. But this is not, this noise is not something that I'm going to really worry about right now. Okay, so we have Wireless Workbench 6 here. And when you open up the program, it's going to open up into the inventory tab here. And so we want to go ahead and import our frequency scans that we did with the RF Explorer and Touchstone Pro. So to do that, we go ahead and click on the frequency coordination tab here. And then we're going to navigate to scan files. And we're just going to click this little folder icon and navigate to the spot on your computer where you saved the scans. And then we'll just double click on each of these one at a time. And so we can see here that we have our three scan files, the distro, the outside, and the omnidirectional. And you can kind of compare these two. So we have our distribution looks like that, and then our outside scan looks like that. So we can see that when we click the outside on and off, we can see that um, the distribution um, has a much better level on the TV stations. The outside is with an omnidirectional antenna. It's in an unshielded building. So we can see that we've ended up dropping this TV signal down significantly. And we can also compare the distro to the omnidirectional antenna. And we can see that we dropped the um, amplitude of these TV stations down uh, a bit more. Uh, but we can see this, uh, this noise that's happening. And that might be because of where the antenna is placed. It might be next to something noisy like a DMX node or a uh, LED uh, light fixture, something like that. Um, so we just want to be mindful of that. So we can see that we have our TV stations here. And so what we want to do is we want to block out uh, our TV stations and tell the program not to uh, put a microphone there. So we can go ahead and click Exclude by right-clicking here. Um, now we can also do this automatically. So we can go ahead and go down into Spectrum and TV channels and click this gear. And we can put in our postal code, so 85032 and in a 50 mile radius and click search. What this is gonna do is just gonna go search um, in the database of what TV channels are in our local area and uh, just populate that into this list and then we can click save. Now, the reason I don't just do this is because we can see that this isn't quite up to date. So we can see that channel 31 uh, is sitting here and channel 31 just ended up moving down from the 600 megahertz band um, with the FCC auction that happened. So if we were just relying on the TV channel import um, from the internet, it wouldn't give us the correct data. And so we want to go ahead and exclude this and exclude these um, because we don't want to place a microphone over this unless we have to um, because we want to make sure that we have the highest uh, signal to noise ratio with our microphone. So I'm going to go ahead and finish out populating all of the TV channels and we'll pick it up right after that. Okay, so we marked out where the TV stations are, and we can see 27 and 29 here. Uh, these are two TV channels that are going to be uh, coming online soon, um, and I went ahead and marked those out, so this is kind of future-proof. Um, and you can find all of this data of what TV channels are coming on and offline on the FCC website. Also, tvfool.com is another place that you can go uh, check out. Now, 
if we zoom in on one of these uh, TV channels, we can see this little spike here. Now, one thing that I like to do is I like to mark where that spike is. Um, and this is called the pilot signal. And this is basically the TV channel um, saying to our TV receivers, hey, I'm a channel, I'm waving. Uh, go ahead and coordinate your receiver to this frequency. And so that frequency happens to be 0 0.309 megahertz above the TV uh, starting frequency. So we can see that this uh, right here is at 530. And so this spike is at 530.309 megahertz. And this is going to be the loudest portion of the TV channel. And we want to mark this so that uh, wireless workbench can coordinate um, if there's going to be any intermod happening off of this. So uh, to do this, uh, basically we just remember that it's going to start at 503.309. And so we can go ahead and um, add in an inclusion here. So we click on this gear icon, we click add new row, we, zoom, we go all the way to the bottom, and we can now put in this single frequency right here, and that is going to be 530.309. And we can then let that go. So we can click save. And what we're going to do is we're going to change this profile to be generic exclusion IMD. Because if we click generic device, this would say, okay, this is a device that we have in our area. We want to make sure that this is always working. Um, and we want to make sure that this doesn't have any issues. Um, whereas generic exclusion is saying, hey, I don't want to have a transmitter here for my room but I want it to calculate the IMD. So if I had a transmitter right here, it would calculate the intermodulation distortion between this frequency and my transmitter. So we're gonna go ahead and click that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do this on every single TV channel that's pretty loud. And that would be you know, 15, 17, 20, uh, 26, and 31 here. I'm also gonna do it on 29 and 27 because those are pretty loud transmitters um, as far as signal amplitude goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off the recording and we'll pick it up right after that. Okay, so here we go. I have all my TV stations marked out and I have my uh, pilot signals on all the main TV stations that are quite loud. Um, and next thing that I need to do is I need to import my inventory. So we're gonna go ahead and click on inventory and then we're just gonna add new device. And we're going to add all the devices that we have at our campus here. So I have uh, Shure QLXD, and we're doing the H50 band here, and we have six of those. And I'm going to put this in the adults. Uh, the zones we can actually uh, specify, and we are going to be able to specify that up in uh, tools, manage zones. And so zones would basically be uh, if I had all of the rooms that I'm coordinating in one general area, um, I would want to coordinate all of those frequencies in that one zone. And then if you had a separate building that was close but not close enough to cause um, some intermodulation distortion, uh, basically a separate building that's shielded with space in between, then I would create a separate zone for that room alone. And so we can see that I have adults and kids building. So I'm going to go ahead and place my kids building, uh, the frequencies that are in my kids building in that separate zone. Now what Wireless Workbench will do is it will coordinate all of these frequencies to be able to work together, um, but the adults building, it will calculate the IMD distortion off of those. Uh, that are only specified in this zone. And the kids building, it will only specify uh, those microphones that are in that room as well. Um, but all the frequencies will coordinate nicely together. So you won't have a frequency programmed in the adults that will overlap with the kids and likewise the other way around. And so let's go ahead and add in my Sennheisers. So we have the band A and we have four of those in the adults. So I'm gonna go ahead and press add. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, import all the rest of my microphones and we'll pick up the recording after that. Okay, so I've imported all of my devices at this campus and we can go ahead and add channel names uh, to this by just cl clicking in here, double clicking, and then we can write it in. Uh, if you do have um, current frequencies that you wanted to see if they were um, interfering with each other, you can actually uh, double click into this, select the group and channel or on things that 
uh, are manually set, you can actually manually import a frequency uh, on that. But we're not going to go ahead and do that because we're going to be giving everything new frequencies here. So uh, we can see our zones. We have adults and kids building. So um, now what we're going to do is we're going to actually import all of our inventory into our frequency coordination tab. And so basically we click frequency coordination and then we click add frequencies over here. And we're going to select in frequencies from inventory. And then we're just going to go ahead and press OK. And that's going to populate all of our uh, devices into our two rooms here. Now if we wanted to go ahead and add extra channels uh, for backup, uh, we would basically go and right click, go back up frequencies, we can add a couple and press 2. Um, and go to this one, we can add some backup frequencies. And we can see those down here. And same thing with the kids building. So we're going to go ahead and add a backup frequencies in here. And we're going to select 2. And scroll down here and same thing. Add two backup frequencies. So the next thing that we want to show you here is we can double click into these to expand or contract uh, these devices here. So we can make things big or small. Um, and what I want to mention is that Wireless Workbench uh, prioritizes things that are higher in this list. So we can actually move these things around. Um, and so I would recommend uh, using either your uh, most important devices at the top or your uh, oldest devices at the top. Uh, so say you have some new uh, digital transmitters, uh, I would leave those towards the bottom if you had some older um, analog devices because uh, the analog devices are going to be harder to find frequencies than the digital devices. So once you do that, uh, we can go ahead and press calculate. So let's go ahead and make these bigger here again and we can go ahead and calculate our frequencies. So go ahead and press calculate and then it's going to do a bunch of math here. And this is doing thousands of calculations of math so it does take a bit of time. Uh, but we can see here that it just populated all of these uh, frequencies here no problem and it's still thinking a bit and whoops Looks like uh, we have a couple uh, of things in our in-ears that won't work uh, with current specs that we have. And same things in our kids' building. We were able to get uh, backup frequencies for this, but not down here. So what we can do if we run into this is basically change what the calculations are doing. And so I'm going to make these small here. And so if we click on this, we can go to compatibility. Now compatibility basically lets us pick if we want to have a very robust channel that we know that is not going to have any issues uh, being that it is in clear spectrum and it is not close to any intermodulation um, distortions happening. Now we can see that these won't work because we don't have enough frequencies to actually populate all of our main transmitters here. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to click more frequencies on this. Now this is just going to ease up the calculation uh, and basically place some of these closer to some of that intermod uh, that might happen. Now intermod does happen when you have two transmitters that are really close together. Check out my uh, video on YouTube if you want to check that out. Uh, you definitely can. So we changed those to more frequencies uh, on all of these things and let's go ahead and press calculate again here. And so already I can see that now I have four out of six on my uh, in-ears here. So we might not be able to get any backup frequencies, but we did get all of our main transmitter frequencies here. And we did get all of our main frequencies for our wireless microphones in our main room. And same thing with our, uh, our kids building. So we have our students and then our EK stuff here. Now, say you really needed to have backup frequencies and you're like, man, I really need to have this stuff working. What we can do is we can uncheck uh, some of these things. So uh, basically, these are the channel to intermod spacing. And this is uh, calculating all of our intermod distortion. So we can see 2T3O, and that stands for two transmitter third order uh, distortion, fifth order distortion, seventh order distortion, nine order, and then this is three transmitters third order. So what I'm going to start off doing is removing the seventh and the ninth order on all of these. So I'm going to go click that, move over here, same thing, move over here, same thing. 
Okay, so we can see that we are only calculating our two transmitter third order, two transmitter fifth order, and then three transmitter third order distortion on all of our things here. So we can go ahead and press calculate. And it looks like we are still in the red as far as getting some backup frequencies. We can see 12 out of 14, 8 out of 10. Now, if you wanted to ease up this a little bit more, you can. Uh, basically, the next thing that I would click off is either the fifth order or uh, the three transmitter third order. That's going to give you a lot of frequencies back. Um, and so let's go ahead and click off our two transmitter fifth order. As the fifth order distortion is significantly lower in level than the third order, um, but, you know, once we start removing these, we have a higher possibility of giving ourselves some intermod issues. Uh, and so you may end up getting some uh, frequency overlap with those intermod distortion products and your main frequency. So let's go ahead and take those off. Press calculate again. You know, so at this point in time, I would say that you know, it doesn't really matter about having backup frequencies that much. I really would like to have my uh, channels nice and clear and not having any issues with Intermod. So I would go ahead and submit this without having any backup frequencies for this. Um, now we can see that I did get an extra frequency on backup for the H5, which is good. Um, and dismiss those. And so I would go ahead and say that this is good. But just for fun, I'm going to go ahead and unselect the third order from three transmitters. Three transmitter third order would basically say that we have three transmitters right next to each other, and we're calculating the third order transmission, or the third order distortion from those products. So if we unclick this, what I can do, oh, I did forget to click that here. So we'll go and unselect this from all of them and calculate. And now we have all 14, so we have two backup frequencies down here, and we have five out of six frequencies from there. So that's perfect. Now I can say, hey, I have some backup frequencies just in case any of these other frequencies don't work. Um, and I feel pretty strongly about all these frequencies that I have submitted. Now, uh, if you do end up clicking some of these off, you will want to test this out and make sure that you don't have any intermod distortion happening by getting all of these channels together and talking into all your microphones and making sure that uh, all of them are still clear. But now that we have all of our uh, frequencies here, we want to go ahead and put them back into our inventory tab. So we can go ahead and press assign it and deploy. And we can see the ranking. Um, and of all of our channels. So uh, if we did have some noise uh, happening on um, any of these, like if we were going to be placing a microphone over a TV station, uh, this might go to two stars or down to one star, uh, depending on how clear that channel is going to be. So we can see that all of our stuff is three stars, which is great. And it even has our assigned channels that those are going to. We can see the ones that aren't um, assigned to any channel are our backups. So we can go ahead and press deploy to inventory. That's actually going to actually save them into the inventory tab. If you do have any networked devices, uh, it would go ahead and push those out to those devices, um, which is pretty awesome. However, right now we're just going to go manually set that. So we can go into our inventory tab. We can see all of our frequencies here. And what we can do is we can just go to reports, inventory report. And we can actually ex um, we can uh, go ahead and turn off some of these things. We can export this as a uh, report. So we're going to go ahead and press generate report. And so we have our whole show here and our backup frequencies for all of our devices. And we can export this as a CSV or a PDF. So I'm going to export this as a PDF here. Go find my Midtown folder and inventory. Actually, we're just going to put. Save that. We're also going to export it as a CSV real quick. And close. And then we'll just want to save this into that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and press Save As. Go into where we have our folder. And this is going to be CCD Midtown. And 
save that. And that way I can always open this up at a later time if I need to. Um, and then now we're just going to go ahead and program all of our frequencies at the receivers and sync up the transmitters to it. And that's basically how we do a quick and dirty um, RF coordination. Now you can get much deeper into this um, and uh, war game is what it's called, the channels together. And uh, it's always suggested to make sure that all of your channels are clean by doing the war gaming. And you can search that up on YouTube uh, if you need some more information about that. Thank you so much, guys.